Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alma and this is Eternal Bliss. For today's video, I am actually going to be answering a question that came in through Facebook. I do have a page for this channel on Facebook. It's called Eternal Bliss. And the question is basically this. How do I cleanse my crystals? How do I charge them? How do I program them? And why should I do all of this? So the first step when getting a crystal is to cleanse it. And why should you cleanse a crystal? Well, cleansing means removing any unwanted negative energies that might be attached to that particular crystal. And the way that happens is, if you think about it, the crystal first of all has to be mined or sourced from a particular location. So perhaps your crystal came from Brazil or from a mine in Mexico, from a mine in India. So first it has to be sourced from that location and then it has to be taken to another location where it will be either polished, tumbled, or cut, or uh, modified. So that's another set of hands that are touching it. After that, your crystal will be transported to its next location, which is probably a retailer, a wholesale distributor. So that's another set, set of hands touching it. After that, your crystal might finally end up at an online store, a physical store, or perhaps a friend purchased it for you. So once again, another set of hands is touching it. By this time, your crystal is probably full of energies that you do not want on you. Um, as you know, all of us carry a different frequency, all of us vibrate with a different energy, um, and you definitely want to start off with a blank canvas when you start working with a new crystal. So how do we cleanse a crystal? Well, there's very many different ways to uh, go about cleansing. Uh, before you choose any of these different uh, ways, I would suggest that you Google and try to be very informed about your particular crystal because every crystal is different. They all have obviously a different uh, energy. They also are made, um, the, the components that make up your crystal might not uh, be compatible with your cleansing method. So for example, Certain crystals will dissolve in water, so you cannot cleanse them by water. Certain crystals will crack under heat, so you cannot cleanse them through heat or through smoke. And certain crystals cannot be charged by direct sunlight because they will lose their color or they will crack. For example, amethyst. You see this beautiful purple stone? If you place this under direct sunlight, it will lose its color and it will crack. So this is definitely not a crystal that you want to be charging under the sun. You would preferably charge this under the moon. So some of the, my favorite cleansing methods are, number one is cleansing with smoke. So here I have a incense stick. This is sandalwood. And what I usually do is um, I can either fan with a little fan the flame, the, I'm sorry, the smoke, Towards the crystal, I can place my crystals on a bowl or on top of a table or on my windowsill and then just fan the smoke towards the crystals. Or if I'm only working with one crystal and I've already Googled and made sure that this crystal is not going to be damaged by the heat or by the smoke, then what I do is um, I allow the smoke to penetrate the crystal. So I might place my incense stick at a relatively safe distance. And as I am allowing the smoke to filter through the crystal, I might say perhaps a chant or a prayer. Uh, you can ask uh, your spirit guides, your, your ascended masters, uh, God, whoever you believe in, your angels, to please help you purify that crystal. Also, it's very important to visualize any negative energies leaving from that particular crystal. So the next method we can use is actually purification with salt. So salt is a, a really good uh, purifier. It can help you cleanse any negative energies. You can actually take ritual baths with salt to cleanse yourself. Um, the way I do it with my crystals is I might grab a particular crystal. So here's a very beautiful one. And what I will do is grab a bowl. You can see I have a bowl with salt and bury my crystal in the salt. So I will cover it completely with salt. Uh, once again, visualize that all negative energies are leaving. I might say a prayer, 
I might do uh, some chanting over it and then I will let it sit for approximately 24 hours. If you do not want to use salt, you can also bury your crystal outdoors in dirt or if you have like a perhaps a plant, a potted plant, then you can dig your crystal in the dirt, let it sit there for 24 hours or maybe a couple of days. And then the next method we can use is purification with water. So if you're lucky and you have to and you happen to live by a body of water such as a lake or a river, a creek, then it would be very beneficial for your crystals if they are not water soluble. Once again, I do strongly urge you to Google the properties of your crystals before putting them underwater. So what you can do is grab your crystals, place them in a little pouch. Usually when you buy a new crystal, it comes with a little baggie, a little drawstring bag. You can place them in the bag and then just lower the bag into the water and allow the water to just run through it to um, you would completely submerge them and once again visualize any negative energies leaving say a prayer or a chant if you do not happen to live by a body of water then what you can do is if um, you have a reverse osmosis system or a filtration system then you can run the crystal through some running water so you can open the tap as long as it's filtered and pure you can open the tap and then just let the water run through your crystal and you can visualize that water cleansing and clearing your crystal. Or another option is you can also buy filtered pure artisan water or if you have a reserve of rainwater, usually I'd like to keep a small reserve. When it rains, I put a bucket outside and try to collect pure rainwater for ritual use. So what you can do is put some of that water in a cup and then you would just drop your crystal in there and you let it sit for about 24 hours. Once again, you can say a prayer or a small chant over your crystal to aid in the purification process. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about now that we know how to cleanse our crystals is how to charge our crystals. So charging is preferably done on a full moon day. Every month we do have a full moon. You might wanna check your calendar for that. Uh, so what you can do is plan out uh, maybe you can cleanse your crystal the day before the full moon. That way on the full moon, your crystal will be cleansed and ready to go for charging. So what I personally like to do for my crystals is I place them in my windowsill where I know exactly uh, the full moon is going to hit them and it's going to uh, radiate all of its power on them. Uh, if you have a big backyard, maybe you can put them outside in a secure and safe place where they will not be harmed and they can absorb that moonlight. Certain crystals you can place under direct sunlight. However, I do once again uh, ask that you please do your research first and also that you, that you charge them with care because really strong direct sunlight can cause discolorations or it can cause them to crack. And to become damaged and that's definitely the last thing you want you want to make sure that your crystals are safe and protected at all times so now that we know both of the either sunlight or moonlight charging methods there is one more method we can use and that is to charge a crystal with other crystals so for example I have a selenite beautiful radiant crystal here that I use for charging so what I use this uh, specific crystal for is to charge my jewelry. So for example, I have a, a gorgeous citrine and iolite bracelet here that I can place directly on this larger crystal and leave it there for charging and for cleansing. Now by charging, what that means, it's kind of like how you charge your phone. Um, same thing with the crystals, if you feel that they might need a little boost of energy, then you can charge them under the sunlight, under the moonlight, or with other crystals. Uh, certain crystals do not need to be charged or do not need to be cleansed. For example, I have a piece of kyanite, black kyanite. This particular crystal does not need to be uh, cleansed or charged. Well, you can cleanse it just to get rid of anything that might be stuck to it, but generally speaking, um, this one does not need any charging. It's a very powerful and clearing crystal, so you can actually use this uh, to, to help aid in the removal of unwanted energies in a room 
on yourself or on other crystals. So definitely I do suggest that you spend some time reading up on different crystals, their uses, uh, how they can help you, how they can be beneficial for your home or for other crystals. And even your pets, these crystals, once they're charged, you can put them on their, on their bed and they might radiate their own precious energy onto your pets. So that's all I have for you today. On the next video, I will be talking about how to meditate with your crystals, how to set an intention, and how to program them so that they can help you manifest exactly what you want or to attract the type of energy you need in your life. So if you enjoyed this video, um, I do encourage you to please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Also, I have included a link to my Facebook page. If you want to connect with me via uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, then I am there for you. Um, my Insta account is at Eternal Bliss. Same thing for Twitter and same thing for Facebook. So it was, uh, that's pretty much I have all for you, for you today. Uh, thank you for your time. And until next one, see ya.